Whiskey. Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I'm in Scotland. Today I have Center Can, 22 years old. Yay! 47%. Yay! Ex bourbon casks. Yay! Price 199 euros. Boo! Whiskey base number 162106. So Feta Can, whoops, this is how it should look. Feta Can. <laughs> yeah, you have here the nice little um, unicorn there on there. You have here on the lid, you have the copper because the spirit still is actually cooled by waterfall of water. And you have here this very, very beautiful look at that glass bottom of that bottle. Um, heavy, um, exquisite looking bottle here. So, um, what we had is the last Feta Can I tasted here, I think, was the 16 year old, which came out just recently in 2020. And the uniqueness about that, even Ralphie had it, was its chocolate malt. Over here in Germany, it sold out fairly quickly, and we're waiting for the next batch to arrive. In the meanwhile, now the next um, release from Feta Can is the 2020, the 22 year old for year 2020. And um, it only has the one unique feature, ex-bourbon casks. So, so not much to say about that. And the 47%. I personally think both releases, especially this was actually geared for travel retail. Big, big box here. A little bit of a guest, a little bit of a present, a little bit of a, um, of a statement. Most retailers, most specialty shops would not like to have a, that big of a box for this normal bottle here, but Travel Retail likes to make a big thing about it, so um, who knows. Uh, the unicorn, as I mentioned, 1824 in the back, it says purity is a rare thing worth striving for. And since Sir Alexander Ramsey established the distillery in 1824, we've been going to extraordinary lengths to capture the purest exp expressions of our whiskey's character. Located in the foothills of Scotland's Cran Gorms, um, we don't just use crystal clear mountain water as ingredient. We drench our stills with it, cooling the copper so only the finest vapors rise. Now, um, for me, Feta Can is basically the same thing Yura used to be. About 20 years ago, no one ever had a Yura. Uh, Yura was basically a blender's um, whiskey, just like Feta Can. Feta Can, they produce, the nice little book here, Feta Can produces over 3 million liters of alcohol a year. That's a lot. <laughs> Especially since we don't see any of it. And so this is actually, they belong to the White and Mackay, um, that's Emperador. That's the same people that own Downmore. So what they did basically is they've decided now to say, hey, let's rebrand Feta Can. Let's rebrand it with a beautiful bottle, check. Let's give it a great packaging, check. Especially with the copper and with the green. I was at a trade fair and they actually had a, um, a stand. First of all, there was Dalmor. Second of all, there was Yura. And third of all, there was Feta Can. And the Feta Can stand, they actually had a mini waterfall running over a pot still, basically, to show that. Beautiful, beautiful exhibition stand. Um, and it really demonstrated the focus that this company will now have on Feta Can. And so they brought out the 12, they brought out the 16, now they have the 22, and they'll bring out other expressions in the future as well and market them to North America, Europe, and Asia. And so hopefully you'll be able to have some fine, fine expressions here and they won't just end up in blends or in maybe um, no-name supermarket discounter whiskeys as well. Every time I taste it, I think I have something from Ben Draken in the, um, that's from Lidl. Now the nose, this has a beautiful, beautiful um, bouquet. I have orange zest wrapped in a nice leather moment. A little bit of vanilla, um, a lot of malt coming in there, and a tiny little bit of wood focus with vanilla pinch um, just added there. Beautiful, beautiful nose. The nose is a B minus, B. 47%. And what's really, really missing, hey, um, White and Mackay, if you're watching, um, Ralphie will tell you exactly the same thing. The label is a contract. So where is the word non chilled filtered? Not on there. Not on here either. So it must be colored. And uh, the second thing is, um, sorry, non chilled filter. And the second thing is natural color. So um, it actually doesn't say anything here about color and it doesn't say anything about um, non 
a non-chilled filtration by 47%. We would expect to be non-chilled filtered, but it's not. Now, one other little tiny, tiny little fun fact is um, since 2000, we now have basically the, the, um, the requirement that every single um, product sold in Europe has to have a contact address in Europe. Since Scotland no longer belongs to Europe, <laughs> it can't be Scotland. And so what we're going to do in the next 10, 20, 30 years is when I look back and we look at these bottles and say, oh, when was it dated? We can, of course, take a look at the little stamp code here, the time code, and we can see that there's a little bit of information here. Um, it's very difficult to read. I have a, okay, the information is there, 2020, and um, so, and all that stuff. But actually, we're going to see and say, oh, look, it has an import address of Madrid. And so Madrid would be here. The European importer is Stillman Spirits in uh, Madrid. And therefore, you know, this was um, a bottle after 2020 and not before. So let's try it. Cheers. Mm -hmm. That orange zestiness continues through here. A little bit of um, furniture polish, a little bit of leather. It's got a tiny, tiny little of a bitter kite in there, a bitterness. Um, I do have a control, uh, a, a comparison whiskey. This is Signatory Vintage. This is Speyside Single Malt. It's 22 years old, and it's actually also in a hogshead. Um, it's a single cask. And what we have here is 49.6% um, diluent. This is something you'll not see any place else basically in the world except for Germany. It was one of those released. This costs 20, 20, 22 euros, 119 euros. This at um, 22 years is then 199 euros. So that really is the question here. Am I paying 80 euros for the packaging? Or is this whiskey just so much more expensive to produce, to market, to actually um, distribute? Now on the nose, the, uh, the feta count is so much better. I get a little bit of a lactose acid here. I get a little bit of a much higher pitched um, gooseberries. And here I have more of that orange zest, a little bit more of that leather, a um, little bit more of that furniture polish, which is actually a very, very good thing. This was 49.6% um, cast strength. This is 47% and just batch strength. My secret of the day is, um, I've tried this a few times now, um, is to add a few drops of water for about one CL, five to six drops, and that it goes like this and it gets a little bit of the bitterness and it goes back up. What happens is, is that middle palate just evens out and it just remains very, very soft, very, very nice, um, very, very vivid compared to what it was beforehand. So going over to Dao Yun, I must admit, it tastes better than it smells. Now, you and I, we're not the best of friends. They always have a tiny little bit of a, of a special characteristic that I'm not really sure of. I get more grapefruit. I get more gooseberries. It's a very, very light, a very, very bright type of whiskey. Going over here to my feta can, one second. Cleansing the palate with the couple drops of water added. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Excellent. As I said, mmm. Even towards the end, it goes up a little bit. Um, we do have some tasting notes here. It says the notes, um, the nose banana. I never get banana. Citrus fruit and plum, okay, combined with raisins, fig, and gingerbread. Interesting. And the taste, we have spiced pear. I get a lot of pear in the end, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Caramelized orange and coffee. I'm not sure about that. Tempered by licorice. That then makes way to um, a, a morella cherry, plums, and triacle. Triacle is this very thick, um, sweet stuff. Yeah. Um, I forgot. We have, um, we have um, canned pears at the end. Mm. Very, very good. I'm going to give this whiskey a B- on, on the taste. 
I really like it. It's a very, very well-made whiskey. I love the bourbon um, character of this. I love the 22 years old. I enjoy the 47%. There's nothing I would really change about this except for one thing. The price. <laughs> 199 euros is a lot of money to lay down on the table for this whiskey. Um, as I said, 129. So um, one of the rules I have, if it's more than 10 euros per year, it's overpriced. And so this could actually cost 220 euros. And I would still have to say, well, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, well, 149 would have been better. 100, 199, it's like, well, I'm not going to buy another bottle. This is something I definitely would like to try. This is something I definitely like to maybe try for the holidays. Um, maybe for a birthday present, maybe for something special where I have a dram or a nice little 5 or 10 CL sample and just go, hmm, this is nice. Wow, that's a lot of money. Okay, good. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> but this is something very, very, very special. We should uh, um, see it as a special whiskey. We should see it as something that does cost a certain amount of money, but actually delivers um, on the palate and delivers on the, um, the taste that I really can enjoy. All right, so my question of the day is, what is your favorite feta can whiskey? Have you had any? Have you had a 12? Have you had a 16? Have you had a 22? And if not, what do you think of using a unicorn as the symbol of this whiskey? Is that a good or bad idea? And what other symbols do we have for other whiskey distilleries, except, of course, the buck or the deer with its antlers, Dalmore and all the rest, Glenfiddich and so on. What other animals do you know um, except for that, um, that unicorn or the deer or the buck? Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please tell others. Please share this whiskey, this whiskey, this with this video. And thank you very much for being so loyal to this channel. All the best, Whiskey Jason here. See you soon. Bye bye.